Hi, this is Living Food Wise. Welcome, I'm Janine, and today we are making gluten-free biscotti in two flavors. The first one is a gorgeous cranberry, almond, and orange biscotti, yum. And the second one for a variation is a choc hazelnut biscotti. So let's get baking. Once again, we are borrowing the flavors of Italy. We love the recipes from Italy. We're making a traditional biscotti, which actually has a two part cooking process. The first part, we're going to be making the actual um, dough log and baking that in the, as a whole log. When that comes out, we let it cool down and sit in the fridge, even overnight, but a good couple of hours. Then we're gonna slice it lay it back out on the tray and re-bake it. And that's what makes it so crispy and crunchy and, and delicious. So let's get going with the dough. I'm going to make the dough in a food processor because it's easier. <laughs> Why not? And I have some almond meal and I also have some arrowroot. Now, if you don't get arrowroot, you can use tapioca starch as a replacement. All the ingredients are down below in the description. So you can just relax and watch and print them out later. Now, a pinch of salt, some bicarb soda or baking soda. I'm just gonna put a teaspoon of that in. Now, if you're using dry vanilla, now's the time you throw it in. Uh, and I'm just going to give that a quick whiz. That's all our dries. Very quick. I have some coconut oil, which you could also use vegan butter if you prefer. This actually keeps it paleo. So. We have some liquid vanilla. And I've got some gorgeous Madagascar pure extract. It's a bit richer than the other vanillas. About a teaspoon. And the thing that really makes it pop is some orange zest. Now, make sure when you're selecting your oranges, you get a really vibrant, ripe um, orange. And I'm going to put in about a tablespoon. You know what, I'm just gonna use it all because it's so good. All right, finally, one egg. And the last ingredient is the maple syrup. Let's give for that lovely hint of sweetness. Let's give that a whiz. Okay, great. So. This is our dough. It's quite a wet dough, which is really important uh, because we don't want the dough to be crumbly for slicing. So we're going to mix our craisins and our nuts into it. Now, if you were to put those uh, flavors into the food processor, it would actually chop them up rather than mixing it in. So let's do that by hand. So you can see that the dough is firm, but sticky. It's a wet dough, but not runny. Put that to one side. And we're going to put in our slivered roasted almonds and some cranberry raisins which are sugar free or low sugar. So we don't want it overly sweet, but it shouldn't be overly sweet. And just give that a good mix massage through. When you're happy, all of those raisins and nuts are mixed very well. Get yourself Tray with some baking paper, which I've already done. And 
we're going to form this into a flat log. <laughs> it's so sticky. And I'm just going to lean it to one side so that we've got space for our second chocolate one. I recommend at this point that you wash your hands. I'll show you. Actually, I'm going to wash my hands and come back. All right, I'm back. And I've left my hands wet and I'll show you why. The mixture is so sticky, it wants to keep sticking to your hands. If you've got a little bit of water, <laughs> look how much easier that is. So much easier to form. Perfect. And that's kind of where you want it to be, like that. All right, let's do the chocolate one. Now the base is exactly the same. So I'll meet you on the other side of the base. We have our base mixed up, which has everything except the cocoa and the nuts. So I've got some cocoa powder and I'm gonna add two tablespoons. Now cocoa is a very drying ingredient. When you add it to something, you usually have to add a little bit more moisture. So I'm just going to see what it looks like at the end of this. No, it's fine, it's still wet enough. That's great. I've got my roasted hazelnuts that I'm throwing in. And this time I'm just gonna wet my hands a little bit so it doesn't stick to my hands so much. Got some water here. There we go. Now I'm using only a very small amount of water so it's not gonna affect the dough at all. That looks good. Got my tray. And now I'm going to put it on the other side. Nice and flat. Can be a bit rustic. This is a rustic biscuit. Great. I'm going to bake that for about 20 minutes or until I see the light coloured one going very lightly brown. Not lightly, golden brown. Our biscotti has been cooked now. It, you can see it's got a lovely golden colour. It's always a little bit harder to tell with the chocolate one. So you've got to kind of judge that uh, based on the texture more than anything. And it's quite normal to have these cracks to it. That's completely okay. So this has been resting for quite a while. It's quite cool inside now and you can feel that there's no heat coming off it at all. And as I said, this is ideal to leave it overnight in the fridge before you do the second phase. And you would wrap it in cling wrap um, and then pop it in the fridge. So, but this is cool and we can definitely cut it now. So you want to cut it into, what is that, an inch? A bit less than an inch, maybe one and a half centimetres. I would use a good serrated knife for this. It makes the job a bit easier because you're cutting through the nuts and the fruit. And you'll find that the edges are definitely a little bit crispier than the center is. Or maybe that's because my oven's not great. It could be that. So you may have noticed that there's a little bit of crumbling action going on here. That is because it hasn't sat in the fridge overnight. When it sits in the fridge overnight, it really gets a lovely even texture and it makes the slicing really easy. So once we have that done, let me just do this instead. Now we want to lay our biscotti flat because we're going to put it back in the oven to bake and dry out. Yeah, keep, give them a bit of breathing room to, so that the heat can travel through it. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and do the chocolate one. That's our choc hazelnut ones cut and now I'm going to put the both in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius. Actually no, I'm not. I'm going to put it in at 160. I really want them to dry out so I want the longer cooking time at a lower heat. So we've cooked our biscotti for about 30 minutes in my oven and you can see that they're lovely golden brown all the way through and they've also been cooling for about 30 minutes and that's what makes them go crispy. When they first come out of the oven, they're still quite soft and when they cool down, they get a nice snap to it and they're nice and dry inside and lovely to eat. Um, crunchy. Yum. Super yummy. And our chocolate ones too. So once your biscotti is cooked, it's really important to store them in an airtight container. If you don't, they will just absorb the moisture from the room and go soggy again. And if that by chance happens, you can throw them back in the oven and get them crunchy. And there you have it guys, that is our super scrumptious gluten-free biscotti that seriously everyone will love, it's so yummy. Two flavours, choc hazelnuts and the craisins with the orange and almond. And you can mix it up and do all kinds of flavours with this. So go nuts and try a whole lot of combinations. We'd love to hear from you, see what you've been doing with this recipe. And it's been an absolute pleasure bringing this to you. So we will see you next time and in our next instalment of Living Food Wise. See you then, bye. Today we are making, and we're gonna start that again. And today we are making a gorgeous, is it gonna do that one again too? Yep, yep, gonna do that again. <laughs> Today we are making an orange biscotti. No, we're not. Hi, welcome to. You know what? I just need to get some water. <laughs> there you have it, guys. That is our biscotti, orange, almond, and. I don't know. And there you have it, guys. That's the beef. 